Coming up, Edling or Brennan, find out who Coach O wants under center. And find out what LSU running back Darius Geis has to say about the national anthem protest. And see the new uniforms the Tigers will be breaking out for tonight's game. All that and more, the Tiger TV tailgate show starts right now. Hi everyone and welcome to the Tiger TV Tailgate Show. I'm Zoe Smanis alongside me today, Lily Fontenot and Sean Pennison. This is LSU's second straight home game. Guys, are either of you getting tired of this game, the atmosphere? Not at all. Sean? Yeah, it never gets old for me. A Saturday night in Death Valley, there's really no place to be. Today, it's homecoming. It's family weekend. The band is about to come. It's amazing. The atmosphere through the roof. Well, Saturday in Death Valley. Well, just as we mentioned, this is LSU's second straight home game. Yeah, last week, the Tigers defeated the Orange of Syracuse 35-26. to And even though they're on a 3-1 to record right now, they really have some things that they need to approve on. I think our guys have come, no, I know our guys have come in and had a very focused week. With SEC play ahead, Orgeron let everyone know what he was really looking for this week against Troy. A clean game. Uh, continue to be better at the penalties. You know, we went from nine to three. You know, you're going to have some penalties in some games, and, uh, but we don't want many penalties. Uh, we want to be able to be 50-50 on first down and uh, be able to run, play action, throw the football, get back to running the football, that running the ball the way the LSU Tigers know how to run it, be physical at the point of attack. But no matter how daunting the Southeastern Conference can be, Orgeron keeps his head down along with his players. You know, this is not about getting ready for SEC play. This is about beating Troy. We just think about one game at a time. Guys, what do you think the Tigers really need in order to become an SEC competitor this season? Guys, we all know that LSU is known for their defense, and this year they just haven't been bringing it to the table. The defense has been kind of lacking. I know we lost some major players like Jamal Adams and others to the NFL, but I think the defense needs to step it up and do what LSU is known for. Yeah, I agree. The defense need to, uh, needs to improve. There is a problem of the lack of depth on defense, and somewhere else on this team where there is that same problem is on the offensive line. We've seen consistently when LSU comes up against good teams this year that they're able to beat LSU at the point of attack, able to get pushed against this O-line, and for a team that likes to run the ball uh, and needs their quarterbacks to have some time to be able to make good passes, the offensive line playing well is imperative for LSU this year. Yeah, absolutely. A clean pocket means a clean game for the Tigers. Well, enough about improving. Let's talk about somebody who has been impressing lately. Freshman quarterback Miles Brennan may be getting more snaps in today's game versus Troy after impressing Coach Ogeron last week. Completed four of six passes for 75 yards during his time leading the Tigers' offense. Head coach Ed Orgeron was pleased with Brennan's performance, even though he threw an interception. I thought he threw the ball very well. Great release. He made some great decisions. He dumped the ball to Darrow and went down on the 30-something yard down against the blitz. That was a perfect read. Another Tiger who was impressed with how Brennan handled the pressure was junior center Will Clapp. You know, I thought Miles did really well. Uh, he didn't seem phased at all. He came in, took control of the huddle, and uh, he had a really good uh, couple series he was in. He did his job. <laughs> he showed that he's ready. Being the backup to senior quarterback Danny Etling this season, Brennan has the ability to learn a lot about the position and its responsibilities from an experienced mentor. I've been pretty proud of our guys and everyone stepping up and, and young guys even to make plays and, and contribute to this offense. So um, we're going to continue to keep doing that and find our playmakers and uh, you got to keep improving in, in every aspect of as well. It is vital for Brennan to get snaps under his belt this season because most likely he will be the starter next season. We're not putting Miles in to take over Danny's spot. We're giving him reps and uh, in case he has to play because you know, our second team quarterback, we're not second team quarterback with reps in the game. So, do y'all think we'll see more of Brennan in tonight's game against Troy? After all, it is LSU's final non-conference game of the entire season. Absolutely. I think he's going to get a lot more snaps tonight. I think the more experience that he gets against like an opponent like Troy, you know, it's really going to help him out when we get into the meat of that schedule, really those heavy hitters. If he has more experience, they're not really throwing him into the fire, and he'll be more prepared. Right. Last week we saw Coach O got Miles Brennan into the game with the game on the line. That's a direct quote from Coach O. And we saw how he handled it. He did okay in some spots, not as well in others. But as you mentioned, not to be disrespectful to Troy, but the non-conference part of the schedule for LSU is where the younger players need to get their reps and need to get their experience up. And we're not going to see much of them probably next week against Florida, barring an injury to Danny Etling. So we are going to likely see more of Brennan tonight. Yeah, Brennan needs to really get some snaps in now because, like you said, if something does happen to Etling, he's our guy. He's our second string, so he needs to 
work on it tonight. Well, still to come, protesting during the national anthem is the hot topic sweeping the nation. Find out what LSU star tailback Darius Geis had to say on the issue. And new uni, who dis? See what special uniforms the Tigers will be running with tonight. Don't go anywhere. The Tiger TV tailgate show will be back right after this. More and more NFL players, coaches, and even owners are deciding not to participate in the national anthem. Yet some high schools here in Louisiana are not allowing their players to do the same, which didn't sit well with star LSU running back Darius Geis. So back Darius Geis may not be playing this Saturday, but that didn't stop him from making headlines this week. The NFL players' recent protest of the national anthem at football games has sparked debate throughout the country, and this week Geis chimed in on it. It all started when Parkway High School released a letter to student athletes and parents. The school states that they require student athletes to stand in a respectful manner throughout the national anthem. It goes on to say that failure to comply will result in a loss of playing time and or participation. It then goes on to say that continued failure to comply will result in removal from the team. Darius Geist then responded on Twitter by saying, wow. This is ridiculous. And then Twitter user Michael Spears asked Geis, you gonna take a knee? Geis responded saying, if you don't know, I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The place Alton Sterling was shot and killed at. I have strong feelings about that. Geis went on to respond to multiple Twitter users saying, everything not about LSU. I'm a human before everything. But maybe the most controversial tweet from Geis was whenever he responded to Andy Hughes, who said, I'll burn everything purple and gold if LSU goes there. Geis tweeted back to him saying, burn everything now then. You know, we, we discussed social media. We haven't discussed that topic. But if there's anything that goes on, we, uh, we address it. We talk to our guys. We like to stay out of all those political deals. That's not our, that's not our decision. And that's not for us. Guys went on to delete some of those tweets. It's also important to note that the LSU football players are never on the field during the national anthem. Well, it may be for the better and it may be for the worse, but coming up, we'll see what the Tigers uniforms look like for tonight. And we go on the hunt for the oh so elusive Troy Trojan fan. Don't go anywhere. The Tiger TV tailgate show will be back right after this. The tailgate show, but we've kept you in the dark long enough. It's time to unveil those new Tiger uniforms. And here they are, the theme, Bumblebees. Okay, we're actually kidding. Those aren't actually the new ones. These are. On Thursday, the team announced that it would wear white pants with the purple jerseys it had already announced. The combo looks a bit like a blend of the 2015 and 16 seasons. The pants will have the normal LSU striping on the side, but will also include the block L used last season. This is the third time since 1995 that the Tigers have used a white helmet, purple jersey, white pants combo. The first was in 2007 against Tulane, and more recently, 2015, when the Tigers took on South Carolina. Guys, your thoughts on the uniforms for today? Well, uh, what do you think? We're actually fighting against time here. We're trying to fill time until the band comes in. What do you think about yeah, the uniforms? I love the new uniforms. I love the white helmet and the purple jerseys. I love when they mix it up. And, you know, the L on the pants reminds me of the, the baseball, how last year they wore the throwback L, and I really like them. So. The, the baseball team did lose that game, it must be said. And uh, I like the uniforms as well. It's a reminder of me. My first ever uh, LSU game was against Tulane, uh, where they wore those exact same uniforms uh, in 2007. But we've talked enough. Now it's time to listen to the Four Corner Salute. that is uh, we have to carry on with our show whether we agree with it or not not everyone on this campus is an LSU fan at times you can meet the occasional Auburn fan or maybe see the occasional Alabama wear on campus but as Andrew Landry reports finding a Troy Trojan fan might not be that easy spirits are high here in Baton Rouge during homecoming week and as is tradition we get to beat up on an inferior team this year it's the Troy Trojans I've never understood the joy of humiliating another team on homecoming week. That's why I'm sitting down with Troy's number one football fan to see what they have to say about it. So, I sat down and got to work. But finding Troy's number one fan was harder than I thought. Hi, my name is Andrew Landry. Um, and I'm working with Tiger TV. I'm looking for Troy's number one fan for a possible interview. Uh, is there any way you can connect me to one? Yes, I'll hold. 
No luck, huh? Okay, well, um, is anyone uh, you might work with that's a, you know, Troy fan? What do you mean you're a Bama fan? You go to Troy! Yes, I'll hold. No, I'm not aware of any LSU-Mississippi State game that occurred this year. Uh, hey, so why does everyone keep asking me that? No, your women's basketball coach doesn't count. Okay, buddy. You know what? You can take your Achilles heel and shove it up your- Yes, I'll hold. Not one fan. You're telling me you don't have one fan that I could possibly interview. My search for a Troy fan was beginning to look grim. But I had one last trick up my sleeve. So I've ingeniously come up with a plan to catch a Troy fan of our own. Let's take a look at what I got. Jim Beam Whiskey. Notice that it's already open, and this is actually very key to catching any Alabamian. You see, when they say they want aged whiskey, it just means that they want a whiskey that's been sitting out on the coffee table for about three or four days. Very key concept, you know, common misconception for a lot of Alabamians. Okay, so, and we have uh, Red Seal Natural. Let me take a look at that. This is very, very disgusting dip. Alabamians thrive on it. They love it, mainly because uh, it's absolutely disgusting. And any flavor that's considered disgusting is right up Alabamians' alley. Let's take a look at what the last thing I have. Uh, and this will definitely reel in Trojan fans, I believe, because it is Trojans. Because, I mean, who doesn't like their own team's memorabilia? So with this, I think we might be able to catch a Troy fan for ourselves. The trap was finally set. So all I had to do was wait. And wait. And wait. And wait. Oh, who am I kidding? This is a stupid idea. There's no way we're going to be able to catch a Troy fan like this. What a stupid idea. Alabamians don't even use contraceptives. This is all just a waste of time. But then, a miracle happened. Uh, if I say yes, can I have some of this whiskey? Yes, yes you can. Well, I guess I'm a Troy fan. <laughs> we did it, Tiger TV! A Troy fan in the flesh, look at him! Oh man, this puts a huge weight off my shoulders, you have no idea. I didn't think any of you guys existed in such good condition. Oh man. <laughs> With Tiger TV Entertainment, I'm Andrew Landry. <laughs> was a skit, so if you're a Troy fan, don't worry. It's all jokes over here, but it is a perfect segue into Troy, guys. What do you think they bring to the table in today's game? Well, I'm actually from Alabama, and I know of a couple people who play for Troy, and I think Troy is a team that gets overlooked. They're a really strong team. They had some really great wins last year. They're first in their division right now, the Sun Belt Division, and just like us, they're 3-1, so. Absolutely. I think a really well-coached team is where you're going to get from Troy. You know, maybe going to be a little bit outmatched talent-wise when it comes to the Tigers, but I think that any time that a well-coached team comes to the Tiger Stadium, they get their respect and they have their voice heard for sure. Yeah, the Trojans run a similar style to what we saw last week from Syracuse, which gave the defense a lot of problems. So uh, I guess I'll start with Sean. Uh, LSU's defense coming up against this high-paced, high-octane Troy offense. Well, how do you think the Tigers are going to cope with that offense? Well, I think they had a lot of preparation last week. You know, last week they kind of sputtered. They had a little bit of struggles. But I think anytime you come against someone who the week before had a similar look, I think you're going to do well because you've had some preparation and you've seen this type of thing before. I mean, you mentioned the defense earlier as something else you need to improve on. So how do you see the Tigers' defense going up against that Trojan yeah. offense? You mentioned earlier the Tigers' the defense lacks depth. So I'm worried that the Tigers are going to run out of energy and just kind of get no, there's tired no, there, out. There's nobody on the bench Yeah, there's no one on the bench so that they can't rotate. I know I went to press conference with Coach O earlier in the week, and Coach O said he was going to start rotating people out earlier to get them less tired. So especially on the defensive end with this fast-paced, no-huddle offense. So. Well, still to come, we make our selections in some of the week's marquee matchups. Stay right here, Tiger TV tailgate show. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Now we've come to the part of the show where we're going to make some of our uh, predictions for some of the marquee matchups of this weekend, and then we're going to get to this one uh, that's happening in the stadium right behind us today. Uh, the first one, I want to make sure I've got these stats right. First off, we have a clash of the SEC East and West. Tonight, the Gamecocks of South Carolina are traveling to College Station to take on the Texas A&M Aggies. Lily, I'll start with you. Who do you have in this one? I have Texas A&M. You know, it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game on both sides of the ball, but I think Texas A&M is going to pull it out and pull the win over the Gamecocks. 
I'm going to have to disagree. Not so fast, my friend. I think we're going to go. I'm going to go with South Carolina. I think the Texas A&M coaching struggles have been too much. And uh, I think A&M loses a heartbreaker in this one. It's going to be a defensive battle. 17-13 Gamecocks. Yeah, I think one of the, the biggest parts of this is that it is in College Station. It is at home for Texas A&M. So for that reason, I I'm going to go with the Aggies. They've got a lot of athletes. And, you know, the South Carolina defense is good, but I don't know if they can cope with some of these athletes. Double not so fast. A double not so yeah. fast. So I'm yeah. going to not so fast uh, back at you. The next game we're going to do is Alabama against Ole Miss, the number one team in the country, Alabama, coming off of a 49-0 dominating performance against Vanderbilt, against the Ole Miss Rebels, and Ole Miss, uh, Ole Miss's quarterback, Shea Patterson, a guy you played against in high school. Yeah, I played against Shea Patterson and uh, How'd you lost do? the state How'd you championship do? to him. Don't want to say the score, but uh, he played very good night. <laughs> I think he'll play well again tonight, but Bama's just too much. Too it's just well coached, his, his too first full talent. season at quarterback at Ole I don't think that changes whether or not he loses tonight. <laughs> I mean, I think he's going to – they're going to lose tonight. Bama, too well coached, too much power. You know, I, as much as I hate to admit it, Nick Saban and, and the Tide, they are forced to be reckoned with. Like, I – I do not think Ole Miss can stop them. Quite frankly, I don't know who can stop Bama, and I think the whole country feels that, honestly. Yeah, I agree. So, I, don't know who can, I don't know who can stop Alabama, but I definitely can tell you this. Ole Miss is not the team that will do that. Next, we have number 15, Oklahoma State, the Cowboys of Oklahoma State, taking on the unranked Texas Tech Red Raiders. Uh, the Cowboys looking to bounce back into the win column after losing last week to TCU. Uh, uh, Sean, what do you think? Well, Oklahoma State, Mason Rudolph, I think he has a bounce-back game. Struggled last week, couldn't really get anything going, I think. He'll beat Texas Tech and uh, flying tortillas. Not going to make it happen. To them. I don't know if uh, a lot of people are going to catch that one. They catch that reference. I agree. I think Oklahoma State is going to come back and win after that loss. Like you mentioned, Mason Rudolph, he's an amazing quarterback, and I think he's not going to take that loss last week lightly. And he's going to come out strong and get the win for OK State. He's not going to let it carry over. He's oh gonna, yeah, he's going to move on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're all in agreement here. Mason Rudolph, a fantastic player. Uh, can, not a lot of people know that he can run the ball very well, but he can. He can throw the ball, run the ball very well. I have Oklahoma State winning, and we all do. Uh, then we have tonight's big matchup, pitting the second-ranked Clemson Tigers, the defending national champions, against the 12th-ranked Virginia Tech Hokies. Does uh, does VT pull this one off in Blacksburg? Well, I think that you two are going to pick differently. So I'll start with a not so fast. I think Virginia a preemptive not so fast. <laughs> preemptive not so fast. I think Virginia Tech. They're underrated. They have something to prove. Their offensive line has been keeping that backfield. Josh Jackson, their quarterback, clean all season. I think tonight they're going to keep that going. Blacksburg. It's a home game for VT. They're going to take down Clemson. It's a big upset. Justin Fuente, a very wow. good coach over there at Virginia Tech. Who do you have? Oh, I have Clemson. I mean, Clemson <laughs> has already had, beat, had some impressive <laughs> wins this season. They beat Auburn. They beat Louisville. Like, they're undefeated. They're number two. I I really have Virginia Clemson. Virginia Tech undefeated as well. Well. And it's a home game. Well, one of these teams know. is the defending national champion. That one is Clemson. And that's, and that's <laughs> who I'm going to pick. So your, preempt, uh, your preemptive not so fast what, it did indeed it, uh, that's correct. Uh, I it did, the it did I need to check out. Yeah, Clemson impressed me versus Louisville when – Louisville has the best player in college football, Lamar Jackson, and and when you're able to hold him and win the game by over 21 points, that's going to turn some heads. It definitely turned mine, and uh, I I can't I can't pull I can't pick against Clemson. You know, we talk about who could beat Bama. Well, the last piece people who did beat Bama was Clemson. So you so, did John Watson, Clemson. That's a good point. They lost to John Watson, but they have evolved, uh, allowing their quarterback Kelly Bryant to be able to do some different things and and be able to Absolutely. expose different parts of the field. I never now, said it'd be a blowout. But I think BT will. Well, All we're right. going to hold you All on right. that. Uh, yeah. Finally, we have LSU taking on Troy, the game that is happening uh, at the stadium right over my right shoulder. Uh, before we get into the picks, I want to know from you guys uh, what you guys think will be the key for LSU if they're going to avoid the upset. Well, I think a big key tonight, minimizing those penalties. It's been a big struggle for the Tigers this season. And uh, my prediction, anyway, is LSU 35-10. I think the Tigers are going to win tonight, but I think that it's a lot more of an important game than people anticipate. I think if they really don't iron out those kinks tonight, it's going to be a long haul the rest of the way for the Tigers. Uh, we're actually going to get to our prediction in a second, so don't reveal yours just yet, Sean. You kind okay, of jumped the gun off. a little bit, but what, what, are you, what are your keys to avoid the upset? You know, I don't think all of our audience knows this, but Darius Geis is out for this game, so LSU offense has lost a key player for this game, so I think a key to this is to have the other backup running backs like Nick Grosset and Dan... Uh, Daryl Williams, Darryl Williams come out really strong and play that running game that LSU is known for. How big is a loss for uh, for LSU not having Darius in this game? Uh, I mean, it's big, but I think that LSU has a pattern of great runners, great running backs. And, uh, they always have a committee of when some guy goes down, the next one running, comes yeah, up. Yeah, running back by committee, right. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. It's going to be important to see how the running back uh, core and the coaches are able to get the most out of these players, not having this preseason All-American in. For me, I mentioned it earlier, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the offensive line. 
you know, yeah. uh, a buddy of mine on a podcast I do called the offense uh, Swiss cheese. Oh, shameless oh. plug. Shameless, shameless plug. plug. A plug Played nonetheless, though. Be sure to listen to it. But, yeah, the offensive line has been very poor, and they had problems last week in Syracuse, albeit a Sunboat opponent. Uh, if if the offensive line can't, you know, allow Danny Ellen to be able to throw the ball around and have time to throw it, and Miles Brennan if we get to see him, as you mentioned, mm-hmm. and the runners to be able to run, it, it, the Tigers could be in for a long day. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Absolutely. I agree. Uh, and defense also, the consistency of the defense is going to be important. Coach O said they want, he wants to see the defense play for four quarters, not just two. There were some busted coverages against Syracuse last week, and um, we'll have to see how that pans out. Absolutely. I mean, a complete game for the Tigers, it's really going to help them moving forward in the season, and it's also going to help them tonight. In the, in the yeah, season. you know, seven straight uh, SEC games coming up after this. Yeah, this is LSU's last chance to kind of knock out any kinks that they have right now before they take on, as you mentioned, seven consecutive SEC games. Next week, we're go- LSU is going to Gainesville. That's going to be a difficult... Oh, I'm going as well. Oh, we'll be oh, coming yeah. to the game. Absolutely. Like yeah, I said Tiger before, TV will be know, there. <laughs> if we can work hard and make sure that the rest of the season is clean, uh, if not, it's a long haul. Right, and you mentioned, you know, it, it's the last tune-up game, but the way LSU's been playing, you know, no Nothing game, no game, game can be yeah. looked up, at, looked as, uh, looked at rather as a tune-up game. That's kind of a dangerous mindset to have. Uh, that being said, Sean, you spoiled it for a lot of people at home. What your prediction <laughs> is, um, and I'll let you have a chance to add on anything that you think needs to be added on. But uh, who do you have for tonight's game? I have LSU winning. I have LSU winning 30 to 17. It's going to be a closer game than people realize. I think that. As we all know, LSU is pretty famous for having a few hiccups here and there in small games and playing to the level of their opponent. But I think LSU will pull out the win and eventually get into their get into their groove and ultimately beat Troy. Uh, I have LSU 35-21. Uh, you said you have LSU 35 points offensively, so I'm kind of in the same boat with you. Uh, I'm spotting the Troy offense 21 points. We mentioned the defense. I haven't seen enough to convince me that the defense can, especially after the way they played against Syracuse last week, convince me that they can hold a a high-octane offense, a high-spread, high-paced spread spread offense to uh, under 20 points. Uh, But do you have anything more you want to add? I know you spoiled your pick, you terrible, Uh, terrible. I'm sorry about that. Well, I just think that the Tigers need to be able to get that pass offense going. They're they're always been known as a run-first team, but I think Matt Canada, I think he'll pull out some pass plays that we're not expecting to see. I think he really wants to get the fans into it tonight. Felt like it was a bit of a gloomy game last week, so I think if you can get the fans into it and really get some air raid going, it'll be a fun game for the Tigers, and they'll get better win. Well, you know, another thing we haven't mentioned is last week against Syracuse, LSU struggled with their punt returning, mm-hmm. and Coach O mentioned it during his press conferences throughout the week. He said he took it on himself, and he said I personally did not coach DJ Chark well enough, which is why we had LSU start their offense at the five yard line, one yard line, multiple times. So he said we're going to coach the punt return better, which. Uh, Good field position is key for this LSU offense yes. right now. Special, team, special teams can win games. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We'll be back in two weeks when LSU takes on Auburn. Uh, until then, for Sean Pennison and Willie Fontenot, I'm Zoe Smanaris. Thanks for joining us, and enjoy the game.